Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. About the different components in the AI. So AI is kind of a superset we have. So AI is, is a kind of a branch you have. And uh, inside this AI, you heard about the machine learnings. If you are a data scientist, you already heard about uh, this machine learnings. We have a field. We have the deep learning. We have the natural language processing. Apart from these things, we have the reinforcement learning as well. And so these are the different, different fields of the AI. If I talk about the machine learning, so what we are doing in the machine learning, so in terms of in the machine learning, what we have is, as I mentioned, that AI is the superset and uh, machine learning is the subset. So in this machine learning, which is a subset of your AI, we are using some data mining techniques or we are using some predefined algorithms. So what we have is we have some learning algorithms which is used to build the models. Now, I introduce a new term here, models, right? So what is the model? So model is nothing but a kind of a, a kind of a mathematical equations or a set of the mathematical equation plus the statistics, which learn from the patterns from the data and perform the prediction on the similar type of data. To develop these models, what we are doing is we are developing some algorithms. So what we have this algorithm? So algorithm is not a not a not a kind of a black box. Algorithm is is nothing but the combination of your mathematics plus statistics and implement this mathematics and statistics with a programming language. So maybe like if you uh, if you are uh, from the analytics backgrounds, uh, so maybe you heard about uh, that uh, algorithm is nothing but a set of instructions. And similarly, the things we have in the machine learning as well. So in the machine learning, we have some predefined algorithms, like we have the linear regression. We have the logistic regression. We have decision tree, we have random forest. So we have the series of the algorithms. As I mentioned that the series of algorithms are nothing but having some steps which give the instruction or which having the some kind of a mathematical equation or the formulas which help us to learn from the data. Then after that, we are using these things with some kind of a machine learning libraries. In the market, we have multiple libraries. We, we don't write the code from the scratch. We use this library. And if I talk about the library, can anybody tell me that what is the concept of this library? Anyone, I mean, any volunteer, you can just unmute and tell me that what is the concept of the libraries? So when I speak about AI ML libraries, for example, if I am using uh, Pandas to calculate uh, some operations with respect to tabular data, there I will be using Pandas library. When I am using some deep learning concepts, then I'll be using uh, NumPy library for the matrix operations. And if it is, so libraries are nothing but set of functions which are defined, where oh, we yes. can reuse it. and it is easy to import as well. So yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah. in that like library is nothing but uh, it has a collection of the functions. You also have seen data scientists is also already frequently using these libraries, and uh, in the analytics also like you have some libraries, which is is nothing but the collection of the predefined function, which is used to which is used, instead of writing the function from the scratch, we can use these functions and write the code. These libraries also support the hyperparameters, where we can just tune our algorithms, like the tune we, hyperparameters is kind of a concept to control the algorithm output. 
and also we can implement these algorithms in mostly on the structured data like your CSV file, your Excel sheet, your JSON file. So this is your machine learning, which is nothing but a, 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 a use some kind of algorithms. Then machine learning is also have some some different parts as well based on the type of data. So we have the machine learning type like supervised machine learning. We have unsupervised machine learning and we have the semi supervised or we call it as a reinforcement learning. So I'm not going in the deep of this, what is the supervised, unsupervised. I'm just talking about that based on my data nature. Okay. Based on the type of data that I have, I categorize my data in the supervised, in the unsupervised or the semi-supervised. So based on the type of data, we cover these things. And why we are categorized the supervised, unsupervised or the reinforcement learning, we are categorized because if I have a specific type of data, like for example, in the supervised machine learning problems, we have the label data. Label data is like you have the target columns, okay? So we have a specific type of data under the supervised. When I have a data which is very specific and when we classify into the supervised category, the, the meaning of supervised here is that why we are, we, why we are differentiating these things because if I have a data which comes under the supervised category, we have different algorithms to solve this problem. Okay, in the supervised category, we have the data which is different and, and we solve the different algorithm to solve these problems. Similarly, in the case of the unsupervised, the data nature is totally different. Like in the unsupervised, we don't have the label data concepts. And uh, then when we don't have the label data, so we cannot implement the same algorithms which comes in the, uh, in the, in, in the supervised, the pattern will be different. And when the data will be different, so algorithm will also go, uh, going to be different. So in the case of the unsupervised machine learning problems, we have the different algorithms like k-min clustering, we have the hierarchical clustering, we have the db scan, which is the density bits algorithm. Then after that, we have the reinforcement learning. In the reinforcement learning, again, the concept is, is uh, uh, different. The concept is different because here we don't have the data kind of a concept. We have the agent environment concept. Agent environment is, is nothing but uh, uh, the way that human learn. If you talk about the human learning process, so so we have the two type of learning uh, uh, in the intelligence. So one thing is that you have the data and uh, you are following the set of rules to build up your your memory or build up your uh, uh, intelligence. Like for example, to learn the English language, we start with the alphabets. We have a set of rules, then we start with the two word letter, three word letter. Then after that, we have, we'll start combining the sent word, make the sentences from the sentences paragraph. Okay. So this is what we have like set of rules, but in the few scenarios, we don't have set of rules. Like for example, a kid wants to walk, right? A kid wants to start work. So how, how we cannot teach them like, hey, you have to just take one step then. So t uh, then the process, if, if you see this, if you see a kid closely, it, he first start crawling and try to stand up with the help of some, some bed or with the help of their parents or some side by objects. Then slowly, slowly it start, uh, he starts taking some steps. Sometimes he fell down and uh, when he fell down, so automatically the action which lead him to fell down 
train take this action as a invalid action means that if you follow these steps you will fail so next time brain follow the next step to stand up and this is the learning process so they are this, uh, st- taking the different different steps and a situation comes after like one month a situation comes where her kids is able to walk properly without any any extra help so this is my reinforcement learning and nowadays if you see talk about like uh, uh robots that we have maybe you heard about the boston dynamics so if you haven't heard about this boston dynamics guys you can search uh, the boston dynamics videos over the internet you will see the bl- lot of robots are there in the market which mimic our human uh, human process like they can work without any help and also the way that we have built up this uh, this robots comes under the reinforcement learning then after that we have the deep learning so we have covered the machine learning which is mainly used on the structural data and having the set of algorithms now we have the different field of or or you can say that different subset of the ai which stands for the which is your deep learning in the case of the deep learning what we have is we are mimic our human neuron systems you know that human brain is the most complex machine in this entire world and when we see this human brain or human neuron systems you can see that we have billions of neuron which are interconnected with each other and create a very complex architectures then if i talk about a neuron in this neuron we takes a input we have the we have some kind of a uh, this portion like we call it as a exome terminal which takes the input from the different neuron and then we have the exome which process the information and then after that we have the in the on the left hand side you can see that we have a shell and which having some kind of a dendrites so this dendrites are responsible for passing the process information to the next neuron so the dendrites of a one neuron will be connected with the exome terminal of the other neuron and this is how they create a very complex architecture in your human brain then after that what we are doing in the deep learning in the deep learning we are creating the artificial neuron in the deep learning we are creating the artificial neuron so what we are doing here is that uh, while while when we, we when we start building this uh, deep learning concepts so our neurologist and uh, our mathematician they understand the neuron behavior and uh, once our mathematicians understood the how a neuron works they start looking for some kind of a functions which can behave as a neuron architecture or combination of the functions which can behave as a your neuron and this architecture we call it as a artificial neuron and we also create in the in the one neuron so basically what we are doing is we introduce some kind of a functions and in the deep learning we are calling we are calling it as a activation function in the deep learning we are calling uh, calling it as a activation function and uh, these functions are like sigmoid function relu function leaky relu 10h 
softmax functions. I'm not going in the deep of these functions, guys, because this is not our main objective. I'm just talking about that in the deep learnings, we are using some complex mathematical functions. And the purpose of this, this, this functions are, the purpose of these functions are to just create a, or a simulate a, your actual human neuron. In this deep learning, we are creating very complex architecture. If I show you that how this architecture looks like, so if I talk about my uh, neural network, so we add these neurons and based on my requirements, we create a very complex architecture of these neurons. We very famous architectures that we have in this uh, uh, in this uh, neuron is like we have the CNN architecture which stands for the uh, convolutional neural networks we have the recurrent neural networks we have the lstm which stands for the long shorter memory we have the gru which stands for the gated recurring units and then we are also so these are the gru these are the lstm these are the recurrent neural networks and we have the more advanced architectures which is like a auto encoders, variational auto encoders, and our generative adversarial networks, which we call it as a GAN architecture. So, in the deep learning, we have this kind of a complex architectures, and now the question comes that why we need this deep learning, and where we can use the deep learning. So if I talk about that where we can use the uh, deep learning, in the deep learning, basically, we can use for the more complex task. Like till now, if we talk about the machine learning, in the machine learning, we have the structured information. In the machine learning, we have the structured information in the form of the Excel sheet. As I mentioned that JSON file and others. But in the case of the deep learning, we are not only limited to the, the structured information. We have more complex source of information. So nowadays, it's not like that uh, the data is only present in the tabular forms in the form of the row and columns. Data is also present in the form of the image audio, video, and other file formats. So you have seen that like nowadays, like uh, after emerging of the social media networks, like uh, after emerging the social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So we have a lot of architectures. Uh, we have a lot of uh, file format. You can use image. People are, people are sharing their thoughts by posting the text data, people are uploading the videos, they create the videos and uploading it, people are using the audio to, to just uh, share the information. So all these things is a bit complex to process by the machine learning algorithms and that's why we have the deep learning. So when we talk about the deep learning, generally we talk about the image data, audio data, video data or nowadays uh, in the NLP area, I will also discuss about this NLP. In this NLP area, we we also have this deep learning, guys. Because uh, to solve these complex problems in the NLP, like language translations, or or mainly the language translation or generating the next word, which is kind of a generative task, so we discuss about the deep learning architectures, okay? And uh, now this is your deep learning. And then after that, we have the one more field. And that field is the your NLP, okay? So in the NLP, first of all, NLP stands for the 
Can you anybody tell me that what is the full form of the NLP? Natural language processing. Natural language. Yes. yes. <clears throat> so NLP stands for the natural language processing, right? So the thing is that, as I mentioned that, it's not like that uh, my data is present in the form of the image or audio. Nowadays, we have the data in the text format also, which is in the form of the paragraph, words, sentence. So we have a lot of text data and we want to build a we want to build a a, a a kind of AI systems which can understand the context of my data, which can understand the sentiment of my data, or you can say that I want to explore my my text data from the from the grammatical point of view from the concept context point of view and from the words present in my data so i want to explore my data in the different different format why we need these things because when a user is 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 sharing any thought like for example on the twitter you post a uh, you post something you post a tweet on the twitter so definitely this twitter is telling about this this tweet is telling about your behavior your like or dislikes like for example i just uploaded a tweet about the uh, about some kind of a health uh, related diet or, or some healthy diets to make yourself fit so definitely like i'm more inclined in the uh, i'm more more inclined in the health conscious side or similarly, if, if somebody like some like people are nowadays, like we have this uh, uh, Ukraine Russia war, and people are sharing their thoughts on this war. So definitely, they have their different opinion, and somewhere this tweet is also explaining about uh, explaining is, is that person behavior also. Similarly, nowadays you also have seen that the companies which are very very customer centric and. Uh, when they are providing some service so they ask for the feedback and uh, if i talk about 15 to 20 years before we have a call centers we had a, uh, we have the call centers where uh, you can call and uh, register your queries but nowadays they are just replacing by the intelligent ai systems like for example uh, earlier what we have is that when when you are giving a feedback, so so there was a team which read this feedback and and just explain or okay, then then evaluate whether a feedback is positive or negative, and if my customer is uh, is write a negative feedback, so some someone from the customer t care team they call the customers, but nowadays we have created a, some kind of intelligent systems which can read the your sentiment and uh, classify into the positive or negative category. Apart from these things, nowadays, if you see about the chatbots, you have seen that you, your Alexa is on 24 into 7, but uh, and you are continuously speaking. So Alexa is continuously getting your voice, but it never responds until and unless you ask uh, some questions or if you give a simple statement like for example I, I i said that india is a beautiful country in that scenario maybe alexa will not respond or it should not respond because i'm not asking anything from the alexa or or any 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 voice assistant but if i ask that what is the tourist date so alexa should respond because i ask a question when I said India is a beautiful country, it is a informative sentence. It is not a question, it is an informative sentence. And when I ask, when I mention that, what is the today's date, it is a interrogative sentence. So 
to to see the sentence from the grammatical point of view is also comes under the natural language processing thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today